Hey, it's Jules, AKA DJ Starlet. And so this is my number four video in regards to um, obedience. And so I wanna just go back a little bit. And um, this is one of the things that the Lord's been impressing on me is that obedience um, is a domino effect. So have you ever seen somebody put those little dominoes up and then they hit one and it goes and it goes all the way down, right? Okay, so life is a domino effect and obedience is a domino effect, right? And so what I've noticed, I'm gonna bring you all the way back, um, is this, is that my mom used to take me to church when I was younger. And um, about the time that um, I was 10 or 12, I, you know, I began to know about Christ. And, um, but I never got it, never really clicked or anything like that. And then around the time I was about 18, my really good friend at the time, her mom came over to my house, and this is after I had my, my son, um, and she came over to my house and she wanted to talk to me about this relationship with this guy, this guy named Jesus. And she was telling me all this stuff and I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, lady, you know, whatever, it all sounds good and yeah, yeah, I accept him. And then um, after I did that, I was probably, let's see, fast forward to like maybe, I was till I was about 35, I guess. I don't know. I'd been going to church and I'd been going to Canyon Ridge, which is a church in Las Vegas. Um, and I'd gone there for probably like 12 years. I was on the sports ministry team and I, I brought my boys and stuff like that. But I'm still not really, even though I tried to be connected and plugged in, um, the light bulb just didn't really go off yet, you know. And so um, it was through a series of events. Um, one of them being, um, I plugged myself into a home group, which is kind of like a Bible study, um, and through Canyon Ridge, but it was called Apex. And um, through that, with a group of people, um, I began to hear their stories and watch what was happening in their lives. And so that was really my first experience with a real live God, you know, um, where I saw a relationship instead of a religion. And... Actually, during that Apex time, um, my son actually got baptized. And this was the year that, you know, I was pregnant and having my daughter, Jasmine. She's um, she's going to be 16 in August. But um, so this is 16 years ago, you know. And anyway, during that time, um, I would bring my boys and they would bring their friends. And I remember I have pictures of them sitting down and um, being in that home group. And... Um, one time they said, hey, you know, do you guys want to get baptized? I had really no experience in regards to that. Um, and they were kind of just doing it in their pool. It wasn't really, you know, like we weren't at the church or whatever. But they were like, hey, somebody wants to do it. And then my son's like, hey, I'm going to jump in. I'm, I'm going to do it. And it was like a big thing. And I've got all these pictures. And it was just really cool. And he experienced that. And he, I remember him telling me, Mom, I've had all these talks with my friends and, and stuff like that. So that was like a big thing. And, again, that was like 2002. And so um, going back to the word obedience, I was just being obedient, like obedient, and the light just didn't really click, but it was starting to click. And so fast forward, and it's 2012. And um, you can see there's so many years in between, right? And so it's 2012, and I had this amazing man that I was completely in love with, and um, it went for five years, and uh, we broke up and it was hard. It was devastating, you know. And I remember talking to a, one of my friends who's like an accountability partner, and her name is Shauna, and um, she's one of my really best friends. And she was saying to me, "Come see me, you know. You live four miles down the road, and you never come see me. And so come see me." And I'm like, "Okay, well, where are you going to be?" And she's like, "I'm going to be at church." And I'm like, oh, "Okay, cool. You know where?" And then she told me, and it was um, it was Big Central, Central Henderson, and so. 2012, I drove myself and my girls um, down to Central Henderson, and um, I remember I walked in, and it was like a Friday night, and they were doing a Celebrate Recovery, and it was like chip night, and I was sitting there going, yay, they're getting chips, you know, like, I didn't get it, it wasn't my deal, you know, and I was just kind of like, okay, and but I was like, yeah, I'm so excited for you, and you got a chip, and da-da-da-da, whatever, and these kinds of things, um, but it, the funny thing about that is, is that, um, 
fast forward a long, long time and like celebrate recovery is the best thing I've ever done <laughs> in my life. And I have a chip and my, kid, my kids have chips, but um, that's not what the story is about, but I will tell that story sometime. Um, but it's really about just obedience. And so um, I went on that Friday night and she, and she hooked me because she's like, she knows my background. So she's like, oh, you manage people, you manage projects, blah, blah, blah. I worked with her several times. She was, uh, she trained me on some things and um, she's like, hey, we're doing some stuff at church, you know, will you... Uh, come help us. And so I'm like, oh, sure, you know, and I bring my kids and everything. And so for many years there, um, or the first year or two, Shauna and I did um, some singles events and helped um, set some things for that. Um, and I brought the kids and the kids would help me and they would help me greet and they'd help us do security and they would help line up tables and we'd set out food and I met my friend Stephen there as well and um, Stacy, you know, so my, some of my very, very best friends from, you know, today, I'm Melissa and um, a couple of others along the way, you know, so I'm just, all these things are coming to me right now. <laughs> so I realize how many of you guys I've known from that experience and, and so, um, Anyway, I brought my kids and I, I took my kids around. And again, we're going back to obedience. And so, um, you know, I did those things and then I just got really, really plugged in the church. And then one of the things um, I realized is uh, that sooner or later we end up going to um, one of the other sister churches, same same church, just different location. Um, and for no reason except for the fact that um, we just went to meet a friend and we kind of just fell in love with it. But um, obedience being the theme is that I I kept taking the kids, and my kids started getting to the point where they're like, Mom, can we go to church, Mom? Can we go to church? Can you please take us to church? Mom, 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 you know, it's fuse this and fuse that, and we got to do this and celebrate recovery, and there's chips, and I'm going to work on my anger, and I want to do this, and a place that's safe, and all of these things. And so I'm like, sure. And so, um, like I said, you know, someone introduced me to Christ when I was 18, and then my son ended up getting baptized, and then I'm bringing my kids in tow, and... Um, I told you guys in part one of obedience that one of the children came to live with me, one of the teens, and I have known her since she was in her mother's stomach, and um, her mother and I were very good friends, and um, she came to church with us after she started living with us, and um, I remember she didn't want to go. I remember talking to her before this whole thing happened, before she ever moved in, when she still lived in a different state, and I was like, oh, I don't want to do anything, I don't want nothing to do with you church people, you know. But the kids were just like, it's amazing, you gotta go, blah, blah, blah. So when she got here, we took her and she's like, oh, this is what you're talking about? Like, oh, wow. And I remember going and I remember specifically that my friend Nikki, hi Nikki, um, was with me on that day. And I think we even have a picture of it. And I remember that Nikki and I were sitting um, in in the audience and we're watching the sermon, we're watching and we're doing the music and there's worship and everything going on. And at one point, Judd always says, you know, if... Uh, if you want to be a follower of Christ, blah, 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 raise your hand or whatever. And I remember her, the child that came to live with me, um, just slipped her hand in the air. And um, I remember myself and Nikki just thinking how blessed we were to be part of that experience. And um, we were just like, oh my gosh, can you believe it? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know? Because, you know, it's one thing when you see your own kids do it, you know, my daughters and stuff like that. But it's another when you, there's another child that you can lead to Christ because again, it's uh, to seek the lost and um, to introduce people to Jesus, to help them follow him. And so um, we were on that path and I remember Nikki and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting, you know? And um, you know, fast forward before uh, the teenager left my house and everything like that, um, she had made a friend in school. And so this ended up being one of her very best friends and my children's best friend too. And um, so she continued to go to church with us every week and we're like, we're going to church. And like, these, okay, these are teenagers, mind you. We're talking 15, 16, 17, 18 years old and they are begging, can you please take us to church? Can you please take us to church? Can you please? And so I'm just like, everybody get in the van or everybody get in the BMW or everybody get into the you know, Kia, whatever. And, you know, let's go. And we're going to find a way. And who wants to go? We're going, you know. And we'd always do these little outings and stuff. And we went. And the, the crazy thing is, is that between the time that the teenager ended up raising her hand, um, they the big church had this really, um, I think it was like Central Live, Central Live, um, thing going on, right? And so we'd all talked about, you know, what does it mean to be saved and have a relationship with Christ and that it's a relationship, not a religion, and all of these things. And I remember 
that uh, the teenager's friend, and I'll mention her later if she allows me to, um, she, we're listening to the music, we're listening to worship music, and all of a sudden, I'm like, um, where'd she go? And there was there was a call, and they were doing baptisms on on stage, and um, along with worship music and stuff. And so you can see, like in the in the corner, you, you can see when you're in the audience, you can see these people up on stage getting baptized. And sometimes they have they have it on the monitor, but you can also see it on stage. And so you know, a lot of people might go, and I don't know, I don't believe in any of that stuff, you know. But um, we took her, and as a teenager, she was going through a very difficult time. You know, she was in the process of like her mom was barely hanging on, and you know she she needed that comfort you know she needed that love and she she uh we just looked around and she was gone like whoosh, she was gone and i remember everybody from the smaller campus was just like <gasps> they saw her on the screen and they were just like oh my gosh oh my gosh she's out there oh my gosh and it, it's just awesome when someone who is that age is so determined that it, they're gonna jump out of their seat they're gonna jump out of the seat because they're just so excited to celebrate I have a relationship with Christ and I want to wear it on the outside. I want everybody to know about it. It's already a conscious decision that they've made in their heart, but they're just like, I want to, um, I, I want to show this outwardly, you know, because some people do it like their, their parents baptize them when they're little or whatever, and then maybe the parents pass on or something. And they just kind of want to continue doing what that, um, parent set out for them, if that makes any sense. But, um, in this case, she was just like, she gravitated to it, but she was gone. And I remember just, just screaming and just being super elated for her. And um, all of us were, I think there was probably what, seven or eight or 10 of us there. Um, Cause you know, we travel in groups and so. Um, <laughs> and that was super exciting. And then around the same -ish time, um, my daughter turned 18 and you know, she, when you have um, co-parenting situations, it isn't always completely amicable and in, in, in you know, sometimes you get the you get pushback, um, and one parent may be like, you know, you can't get baptized because that's actually like we can't really get baptized unless your parent says that you can. And um, in the other case, she had says she could, <laughs> and so um, uh, so um, Ash wasn't able, to, you know, to get baptized because of that situation. I'm not faulting him. I'm just stating that that was the fact. And and so um, when she turned 18, it just happened to be that the Lord had planned this so far in advance. This is how amazing he is. He planned it so far in advance that on her exact birthday, they were doing baptisms and at her favorite place. And so um, on that day, she said to me, I want to be baptized. And I put everybody in the car and I'm like, we're going, you know, and yes, you can make up your mind. You have, you have a voice. Yay. You know, and, and so she did. And I'm super proud of her because, you know, she's 18 years old and she made her very, her very first adult decision was to make sure that what she had already done in her heart was displayed on the outside, just like the teen before, and you know? And so, um, again, that was just super awesome to me. And so here goes the domino effect, right? So here I am when I'm, you know, here's my mom, my mom took me, and then I'm 18, and then my girlfriend's, you know, uh, my, one of my girlfriend's mothers came over and asked me to invite Jesus to my heart, and I did. And then, you know, we fast forward, and then my son gets baptized, and then we fast forward again because we're being obedient, and then it's, uh, my girls and then it's the uh, the teen that lives with us and then it's her best friend right and then it's my daughter's getting baptized and then we bring all her other friends to church and it's just just this whole domino effect right and so I'm sitting here I want to say this like four days ago so today's like April 23rd or something I guess it's Monday anyway so um, Ash calls me she says mom mom I was just talking to so-and-so and you know I really miss going to church because I'm down in Cali right now um because I'm helping Graham but um mom when I go back I want to you know I want to go to church and so-and-so her other good friend from high school mind you that we've taken to church many many times um says I want to be baptized and um you know I'm 18 now and my parents can't say no and I've really been thinking about this and this is something I want to do so in that moment, I was sitting there thinking to myself that, you know, there's like genealogy and there's, you know, all this, you know, your bloodline and, you know, all these things. But um, I was thinking about the effect that we have on people and um, the effect that the Lord has on people through us. And um, just the fact that all of those things from the time I turned 18, just totally the, the, this domino effect, because now we've got this, you know, my daughter's almost 19 and her friend is almost 19 as well. But now we have her friend calling her saying, 
I'm ready to make this step. And it's no coincidence at all that when they normally do the large baptisms like that, it's like May or June, right? Because they put the pools out or, you know, it depends on what campus you're at. But um, yeah, it's, it's, no, it's no surprise to me that that's happening. Um, but